Welcome everyone. So nice to see you all in this virtual room, 20 people. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, so it's very nice to see everyone. Um, my name is Micah. I'm the founder of Ocean Now and I'm your host today um, alongside uh, Divya from the Ocean Now team and Ingo and Isabel from Zero Waste EFO. Um, so yeah, first of all, um, welcome also to everyone who is new to our program in Inseparable on our relationship with the ocean and nature. And for anyone who's, who came back, uh, very nice to see you again. Um, so I would like to start just quickly with a note on zero waste in general as an element. Um, so zero waste is one of the uh, yeah, crucial elements uh, at Ocean Now and in, in what we do also. We think that the crisis of waste um, we are generating in our society um, is, um, oh, I think there's a screen sharing happening. So uh, I don't know who this... Sorry, I think this was I. I will irgendwie mich reinbringen. Uh, ah, yeah. So you don't have to share your screen. Uh, no worries. Okay. okay. So... So the crisis of, um, of waste is, yeah, is, of course, also generated by ourselves and by our consumption. And um, we would like to meet it in a constructive way. And zero waste is one of the constructive ways, uh, ways. So first and foremost, it's really about avoiding waste. Um, that's what we think. And um, this principle is also going with our current campaign, going along with it, uh, microplastics and cosmetics and cleaning products. Uh, where we demand a legal ban and yes so i'm really really looking forward to this workshop today yes so um maybe up front a technical note um we're all on your muted uh, by default to your microphone um language wise is it's going to be in in english this workshop um i hope this works for everyone if you would like some uh, translation feel free to put this into the chat. Um, we can use also send uh, this um, word or whatever you don't understand to Ocean Now in the in a drop down. Um, where you find this is um, you click on the chat um, icon and then you can choose it in the blue drop down. Um, so for the um, yes yeah, so the microphone and the camera question we, we do welcome people to switch on their camera because it's just so much nicer to see everyone in the room. It's a, it's a more personal feel to what we do here in this virtual space. So hello, thank you, nice to see you. Um, it, it just makes a different feeling. So if you feel comfortable with that, um, we, we don't say no, it's, that's nice. Um, if you don't, that's not a problem either. Um, so um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it on a technical side. One last note, um, because there will be many tips today, um, what we also recommend is to take a pen and paper to take notes. So if you haven't done that yet, now would be maybe the moment to grab some. I already took mine. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be quite insightful also. Um, so the agenda for today, um, we're going to watch a, uh, a, like a very short clip. It's an award winning clip um, uh, called Waste by Hannah Oliver. Um, then we're going to have the interactive workshop with Ingo and Isabel, and I'm going to introduce them shortly also to all of you. Um, and then we'll have also some time for a Q and A. So the workshop will be the biggest part. Um, for the Q&A later on, as we're like a relatively big group, 25 people, what we would do is um, we will also get back to this later on again. But what we would do is um, if you raise your hand like physically or um, also in the uh, little icon like participants in the Zoom icon, you can, you can raise your hand there. Then we would call your name and you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, we will do this, explain this later again, though, for anyone who's new to Zoom. Um, yeah, so with that said, I think we could make a start with the clip. Um, and what I would suggest then 
Divya, you have the control, I think, on your screen. You could start sharing it. If you yeah. Like. Cool. What we wear on our skin, what we put in our mouths, how we live in the world. Saying yes to that street sample. Yes to that stack of smashed avocado straight off the plane from Mexico. Yes to that second, third, fourth pint in plastic outside the pub. Yes to that coffee in a takeaway cup because you're a busy lady, man. Yes to that telephone upgrade. Yes to that two pound Primani t-shirt. Yes, yes, yes. But what will be left when everything is waste? What goes around comes around. Would you drink that if you had to? Would you like that on Instagram? Here is some food for thought. Can we discard the idea of waste? Thank you, Divya. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this clip is really powerful, I think. Uh, probably everyone agrees. Mm. It's an award-winning clip. And actually, a friend of mine came across this. And uh, and then I was like, yes, this is the perfect match for a workshop. <laughs> um, and uh, Hannah Oliver, who made it, she unfortunately can't join today. Um, but she's sending her best wishes. Um, and yeah, so. Um, this is just, yeah, some kind of inspirational, okay, let's do it. There's a reason why we're doing this here. Um, so next, what I'm going to do is introduce you um, to the workshop trainers, Ingo and Isabel, just briefly, and then we can finally make a start. So starting with Ingo. Um, so Ingo and I, we met at a Zero Waste Frühstück um, a couple of years ago. And we soon realized that uh, Ocean Now and Zero Waste EV really are very like-minded organizations. And Zero Waste EV has also been supporting our petition uh, like we, the, in the current campaign, and we're really grateful for that. And Ingo was also joining some of our actions, uh, flash mobs. Um, and yeah, it's really nice to see you again, Ingo, in this context. It's beautiful, yeah. So. Um, yeah, Ingo has been trying to live uh, zero, like zero waste or waste free for two years. He's the co-founder of Zero Waste GV and his mission is to spread the idea of zero waste. For him, zero waste means not only to produce less waste, but to also live in a more sustainable life um, individually and with others. Um, that includes to save resources, to reuse um, as much as possible, and to save energy to reduce consumption in general. This often works for him, but um, not always. So uh, like, of course, like we're, our society is still like in the big, at the beginning with this. Um, and it also means about learning about the way we consume and produce. Um, Ingo is engaged with human rights also and climate protection as well. And he tries to create a better world together with others. Welcome. Nice to have you here. So glad um, to be here. Thank you. Then uh, I'd like to also introduce you to Isabel. Um, Isabel is a young member from Zero Waste EV. Um, and she realized how uh, irresponsibly we actually um, treat this planet as humans uh, a couple of years ago um, when traveling and also when she watched the movie A Plastic Ocean. And um, yeah, so she realized she really wants to take action. Um, so yesterday she celebrated her first year of um, vegan living. Congratulations. 
um, after having been a vegetarian for over five years. And in the beginning, it was really hard for her to say no to cheese. Um, but then she really developed a strong will. And um, she thinks that with a strong will, it really like this is something you can apply for uh, to other fields. Um, and she also applies it to plastic and waste. Um, she finds that the more you learn about this topic, um, the easier you find suitable and simple alternatives for your daily life. And she thinks that every little step counts to create a more beautiful uh, future world we live in. Welcome also to you, Isabel. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. So yeah, I would say with this, um, I could actually now hand over to you two. Um, so you have the mic and the stage to for your workshop. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, Michael, um, yeah, welcome everybody to the workshop. Um, uh, Michael also, uh, already introduced us a little bit, uh, also about uh, the West EV, the West Association. So I will uh, keep it uh, brief, but a short uh, background to what we do. Uh, so we um, were founded about uh, two years ago to um, strengthen the uh, West movement, to be a platform for anybody who wants to. Uh, engage in uh, political social action uh, to um, um, promote the zero waste idea. So we do a lot of uh, stuff like events uh, right now, most also only online, but um, also workshops, uh, different kind of projects. Uh, uh, last year we had a project about um, festival waste. Also we are in different associations with uh, other um, organizations uh, and projects like, uh, for example, we're working um, towards um, waste reduction in uh, clubs in Berlin. And uh, yeah, many different kind of projects and events um, that we do usually. Um, and uh, yeah, what we try to do is to uh, encourage, uh, to rethink the way we live and we consume, uh, to motivate, to change our habits and uh, our way of living. And um, yeah, each little step counts. So let's dive right in and uh yeah maybe it will also uh be uh, fun to try this out so yeah cool thank you ingo for this um i'd like to introduce you a little bit more about our workshop in general and about the things you can really expect from this workshop um yeah, first we were just thinking about introducing everyone, but we are now more than 25 people and this would just took a little bit too much of our time. So um, we were just starting with a little quiz. Ingo will ask you some questions with rubbish or plastic background so that you can test your own knowledge about this. Um, in the following part, I will tell you about the five zero waste principles. These principles should show you that zero waste is processed made of tiny little steps. And if you know these principles, we will start for like an interactive thing and um, yeah, start to collect some of your ideas to avoid some rubbish in your everyday areas like in the kitchen and in your bathroom. And this will be yeah, the most exciting part, I think so, because you will start to um, get interactive. And um, yeah, I'm just a little bit excited about um, what kind of ideas we will just collect over there. Yeah, and we will start with a little game. <clears throat> and really, this uh, workshop uh, is about participation and interaction. So we want to um, try, we try to make it interactive. I have to say that it's our first online workshop. Um, so it will be a little bit challenged, but I'm sure we will manage it. So for the game, um, um, the game is uh, uh, also with movement, so you are invited to participate, but you would have to um, um, turn on your video feed so we can, uh, can see you if you want to uh, participate in the game, because um, we, we would stand up and move around a little, little bit. I will explain it. Um, so I will ask you um, uh, several questions. So for each, each question, I will give you three possible answers. Only one of um, them are, um, is, uh, is correct. <clears throat> and for each answer, I will point you to a space um, in the room where you can move uh, if you think this is the right answer. 
So uh, only the ones who get, get the answer right can uh, participate in the next question. And um, um, the one who, uh, who is left in the end will also uh, win a little prize. So um, I will show it to you. <coughs> I will ask a question and uh, if uh, the first answer I say come here to this uh, corner. If you think the second is right to this and if you think the third one is right, come close to the camera. So uh, I would ask everybody big, who wants to participate. Big question. Yeah. Um, so the first, I mean, the front is really easy, the back. Um, so coming back to the, to the first result, uh, the, the first option, for on your side it was the left and on our side it would be the right, correct? Oh, okay. So, so on your side, it was the right. Now on your, from you looking, option one is the right. Option yeah. two. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually matter. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, so um, you can just you can just follow my my movements uh, as you see it. It's the right. If you cannot move, uh, you can also do like this from your uh, from your seat. It's also possible. Yeah, or maybe you can just raise your hands like this. Yeah. yeah, you can also do it like this if you like. This would also be all right, or with one hand also. Um, right. Ingo, I still, sorry, but I still need to ask, just so this is clear. Option one is the hands on the right, right? I will, sh I will show it to you. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can follow my movements. It's super easy. Uh, if you are ready, I will start with the first question. <clears throat> so, what country in Europe produced the most waste per capita? Do you think it's Germany? Come to this area. If you think it's France, come to this area. Or if you think to, it's Spain, come to the camera. Okay, so I still need to, sorry about going on about this, but if you say this area, Germany, is, can you say left or right, and it's the left or the right on people's end? So Germany is on the right. Right side now? Is this the right side for you? This is our left, but it's your right. So Germany is on the right, France is on the left. So Germany is on the left here, right? Yes, on your left and on our right, okay. Mm -hmm. France here and Spain here. You can just follow me. It's easy. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. All right. So the correct answer is you're you ready. Yeah. Uh, the correct answer is uh, Germany. So everybody who got it right can, can move on to the next question, right? So uh, what do you think? How much waste is produced in Germany per capita in one year? Do you think? It's 125 kilogram, so we are in the metric system. Um, please come here to the left, yeah? If you think it is uh, 180 kilogram, come here. And if you think it's 225 kilogram, come to the front. Yeah, it's 225 kilograms. So, we come to the third question. Uh, how, what do you think? How long does a common plastic bottle take uh, to dissolve, uh, to be dissolved? Do you think it's 250 years? Come here, please. Do you think it is uh, 450 years? Come here in this corner. Or do you think it's 1000 years? Let's come to the camera. So it's 250, 450, and 1,000. All right, who got 450? This is the correct answer. <laughs> so anybody still in the game? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. We have still some more questions to go. So what do you think? Uh, how many to-go coffee cups are being dumped in Germany each hour? Do you think it's 70,000? Please come here. Do you think it's 150,000 over here? Or do you think it's 320,000 to the front? Um, 70,000, 150,000, or 300, 
20,000 per hour in Germany. So yeah, it's 300, uh, 320,000 per hour. Amazing. Uh, yeah, and also disturbing. <clears throat> Only to go uh, um, one way uh, plastics. Right. Uh, so who is still in the game, please? Only two, Britta and Verena oh, and Carla. Okay, great. So for you, um, the next question, the amount of microplastics we consume per week equals, we consume per, uh, uh, via our food, yeah? Equals the weight of the credit card, please come here, or a stamp, please come here, or a two euro coin. So this is about the weight of the plastic we eat per week. Do you think it's about the weight of a credit card or a stamp or a two euro coin? So the correct answer is a credit card. I, I think this was in the media, so possibly most people know this. But this is uh, the amount of um, microplastic we eat uh, or drink uh, each week. Right, uh, so um, one more question for you. Um, to which country exports Germany most of its, its exported waste? So do you think it's Malaysia? Please come here. Do you think it's China? Please come here. Or do you think it's Poland? This one. So Malaysia, uh, China, for Poland. This is the waste uh, that is exported from Germany. Okay, correct answer is Malaysia. We're still in the game. Carla? Carla is the winner. Is this correct? Everybody else is out? Right. So before it was China, uh, but uh, China stopped the import of uh, waste. Um, uh, um, and uh, today we are um, exporting from Germany to Malaysia mostly, but also to Eastern Europe. All right, congratulations, uh, Carla. Uh, you will uh, win a uh, soap. Yeah. It's a hair and body soap by Spike uh, and uh, Blood Orange. Yes. And um, maybe, Carla, you can uh, get in contact with Maike afterwards, so you can uh, like uh, communicate how you exchange the soap. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you for participating in the game. It was a lot of fun. I don't know if anybody mo moved through the room like me. <laughs> but uh, I did. I tried. Okay, great, very great, great. Okay, yeah, thanks. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, yeah the game was more fun for you, Ingo. <laughs> it was really funny to see you moving. <laughs> um, yeah, I just like to start um, to share my um, screen to just introduce you the five principles of um, zero waste. Just trying. Can you see the pyramid? Yeah. Cool. Yes, possible. Perfect. So that's. Really good, this is working out. So just move your faces over there. Okay, so um, what you see over there, these are the five principles of um, zero waste. Um, the thing is, if you try to follow and integrate them into your everyday life, we all start to reduce more and more rubbish and living or try to live without it. So if you see the first one, it's called refuse. Refuse is just like to, just say no more often and really remind your, you and your brain what things you really need and what you think you really don't need. Um, it's more about to ask yourself what is really important in your life. So this is the first one. The second one is to try to reduce. Um, even with the things we need, it's often more possible to simply have less, like to reduce some things, um, just like asking you, do you really need five pair of jeans or is it like I really um, can't wear them all the time so two are really enough for me um, because less consumption also means less waste for everyone. 
So, um, yeah, reducing doesn't only refer to products, but also to raw materials. It also means like less heating, less water, less electricity, and this conserves our environment and the resources of our planet. So, the next one you see is reuse. So, that really means that all the items that are already in existence should remain in use as long as possible so that we don't need to buy all um, yeah, new items or new products. This is like really easy if you just start thinking of what you can really buy um, like secondhand or vintage, just like stop around at some blue markets or go to some exchange rings. Um, yeah, look at online used markets like eBay Kleinanzeigen or if you like to have a new jacket or a new pants, you can also stop by at Kleiner Chrysler, for example. Um, the next one is called recycle. So this really means what is no longer usable should be at least be recycled. So this means that the raw materials contained in the object should be made usable again by recycling. Um, yeah, and the last one is called rot. Um, and this really means if we apply all of the previous principles, there will be only be substances that left will naturally rot, which means that they will go back into the great cycle and thus form the basics for the new life. So these are all the five principles. And just imagine, I think refuse and reduce is really easy. Reuse is also very easy. It's like the same with repair some things or repair some old things and even though try to recycle them and then um, rock the items you really yeah um, have left in your in your private life so um, yeah then I can stop sharing the screen just a second mm. over here okay there's no screen sharing right for me it's my face okay <laughs> 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 it's just my face <laughs> okay um now we get come to the most interactive part um of our workshop it's like um yeah i will do the moderation and ingo is just like um collect the ideas um which are created by yourself and we would like to ask you two questions to collect your ideas about how to avoid some packing material in your everyday area so we like to um, ask you what kind of thought or trash do you know this is like in in the bathroom and in the kitchen so we try to um, get some focus on the bathroom and the kitchen and even though if you try to ask you what kind of thought or treasure you know. Then the next question is, how can you try to avoid the waste like um, this one, like um, the one you um, told us? And Ingo is just like tipping down in, in the um, Zoom meeting. So like everyone should see Ingo's screen right now. Yeah, this is working out, perfect. And he's just tipping down the um, the questions, so then you can ask yourself. Just get into it. Look around, maybe in your kitchen, maybe in your bathroom. What kind of trash do you know, and how can you avoid the waste over there? And I would like to mute my microphone and just like yeah, pop in and tell us about your ideas, your opinions, and so on. Should we just unmute ourselves or? Okay. I mean, I can make a start. Um, Perfect. Thank you. For me, the like one of the most unnecessary plastic is on vegetables and food, like on and fruits. So I always look for like if I go on like normal supermarkets, I always look for vegetables and food that are not covered in plastic. 
And also like very similar to this is also like um, if you have, if you buy bread, like for example in a supermarket, I mean, you can just take like one bag of yours and um, you don't need to take um, like a plastic bag in, in a supermarket. Yeah, I also take unpackaged food, vegetables and fruit, and I don't take the, the small plastic one if I take several. I just put them like this and then I put them like this on the roller before I pay. So it's like I have to bring my own bag, but uh, other, otherwise it's not that inconvenient. And you, do you see there are still some um, answers in the chat also? Maybe you can right. take a look over there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I live in Berlin and it's possible to buy some food in, uh, un, I don't know the English word, in unwrapped uh, shops. <laughs> you, you, can, you can bring your own um, glasses, for example, and uh, buy uh, rice or um, wet or um, something something like that. And of course, I use um, uh, soaps for uh, cleaning my hair and my skin. And um, I use oil for uh, for my skin. I, I try I try to to um, to use only things uh, that I can eat to um, to. Oh, it has been not, not clean my body to um, to oil my body, for example. Yeah, yeah this is a, um, it was you, Britta, right? I think this was her name. Um, this is a really good uh, answer and a very good solution to um, yeah, avoid some plastics in, in the bathroom while um, yeah, buying some soaps or so, which are not in a container. Um, I, I also think that there are a lot of like uh, packaging in like the lentils or cereal boxes and other things like for which I don't know if there are any alternatives like my the plastic uh, recycling bin is the first one to fill up in my house every time and I really try to not uh, to I carry my own bags for fruits, vegetables, everything but there are so many other things that are only in plastic containers and um, it's not always accessible to go to these other stores uh, sometimes. So what would I do in these cases? I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how to avoid it. So can you give an example? Um. Um, like uh, muesli, like the cereal packets, um, for instance, or the rice or lentils, all of these are always in plastic uh, packets in the stores and um, it's sometimes really difficult to um, uh, to find an alternative. Oh, for cereals and rice, um, it's way more easy while living, I think, in a big city or so because we have some, like what Britta told you, like um, those unwrapped, unpacked, zero waste stores where you can come with your own container or your own box and just get some rice over there and just to put it in there. And so it's not wrapped in, in plastic or um, paper anymore. Do you know one of those stores? Do you just visit one of them? Uh, I, I I don't know where these stores are. I tried Googling it and uh, they were quite far away from where I am. And I, I don't know how to make it uh, practically feasible because I go to the store every, at least once or twice a week. 
So how would this how would this work? Yeah, does anybody have an idea about cereals, rice, lentils? Um, well, if you can't buy zero waste, um, maybe you can buy um, more at once. So you take bigger packaging, um, so you don't have to buy as much <laughs> small packets. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that I, I am doing that as much as possible. Hello, uh, hello from Mannheim. We would like to um, ask you because uh, buying in bulk is very good in big amounts, but we have no idea where could we if we could order these things in internet or uh, is there a shop like uh, Metro in Germany? Uh, everybody that everybody could use but because we don't have a company that's why we cannot buy in very big amount yeah otherwise the, the question for us remains that um what is better sometimes uh, for example with the with the oats there are bio oats that we like hafa we would like to to use bio but most of the times they come wrapped in plastic <laughs> or otherwise we just buy like really cheap ones from ya and they come in paper and same with the toothbrush like we we think about like okay um we should we buy a toothbrush somebody wrote from bamboo we also have those and then i realized oh but they come from china is this not waste as well like should we then better buy the plastic ones from, from germany so that we because as well the transport i guess is a way of waste yeah yeah anybody Uh, I just typed in the um, chat because on my website I have a kind of map. Somebody else had made it, but it's collecting all the unpacked package uh, shops uh, you can find. And uh, it's growing up. Uh, for example, bio companies right now they have also uh, bulbs or I don't know the really name. So I, them more, much more um, shops right now. I don't know, Dija, where you live. Perhaps I could um, give you some uh, ideas where to find. Yeah. And the rest I have written in the chat about um, bamboo um, and what you could use in the kitchen, all the stuff. Yeah, uh, I think these are great examples um, for things that are not so easy to get or also things that uh, come with uh, uh, with maybe some problems also like the bamboo um, toothbrush. And um, uh, I believe this highlights that uh, this whole uh, zero waste uh, living is really a process and also um, sometimes finding the lesser evil. Uh, for example, um, buying rice um, in a large package yeah it's still packaging but it's maybe better than many small packages also unverpackt läden uh, so no package shops um, are really great also a little bit expensive maybe for some um, but also hard to reach for some uh, so um, many more open uh, up everywhere like i believe in uh, most cities and <clears throat> there are only uh, over uh, 100 um, package free shops in germany uh, right now um, but also you can get um, oftentimes uh, and more and more in uh, bio shops uh, like in Berlin Bio Company, uh, in some shops you can also get uh, unpackaged stuff like uh, nuts uh, for example and yeah. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find the, uh, the right spot uh, where to get it and um, but there are more and more alternatives. Also <clears throat> Yeah, sometimes it is uh, a question about uh, what is uh, um, what is the better way to go. For example, there are online shops for bio stuff where you can uh, get uh, cereals and um, uh, nuts in, uh, in in large packages. And yes, it will be uh, carried to you, so it will um, be some um, carbon dioxide produced from that. But also, um, maybe you can uh, just uh, um, go to the supermarket less for that and this could also be a solution so yeah just some ideas yeah please Frida. um 
a few years ago, I bought the, the book from Bea Johnson, uh, Zero Waste, and I tried to, um, <laughs> to, to do the most of the uh, things that she um, projects. Suggested, mm -hmm. but uh, the yeah the the hardest hardest thing for me is that it takes often too much time to um, produce, for example, um, uh, passato tomatoes uh, on your own, or um, to, um, to 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 do gardening with uh, with vegetables, uh, something like that. And to to rot, to 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 have a place in your garden where you can rot uh, the um, the waste, something like like that, or to or to produce your own um, stuff to, for for cleaning the, the dishes, um, or, or make something for for the dish dishwasher. Uh, I, I tried something out, but it um, it didn't work, and uh, so I was very frustrated. Um, that, that I, I wasn't able to, to manage uh, to to um, to reduce the waste. I, I managed it, and, and I managed it at, at some uh, places, of course, because of, of course I, I don't uh, buy wrapped uh, vegetables, or um, I, of course I bring my own uh, bag, something like that. It's not it's not very um, hard. But uh, to really avoid uh, waste, it's, I think it's a very hard uh, fact. Yeah, please, you can just talk. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Hi, from Königsbrunn. I'm Petra, and I just want to tell you that I think it's also difficult um, to buy the all this stuff in the un, unpackaged packaging shops <laughs> because uh, you have to bring all your glasses and all your stuff so sometimes it's um, it's not so easy for for people working when they go to work and after work they want to do some shopping and then go home so you have to bring all this um things with you it's not it's it's not that you know um comfortable or it's it takes time or a good organization so that's the point i want to bring in so um maybe it's also um the luxury of time um which is necessary to to live a like like li live a life like this So yeah, here's Gerald from Stuttgart. <clears throat> so let's say our experience with the unpackaged shop is that many people are coming there with a bag on, on wheels. So maybe only once a month or every second week. Yeah. And then they go explicitly there to that to their shop with their bag on wheels. Yes. And then they do their 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 purchase for that two weeks. Yes. And uh, so it's clear it's all about organization. Yeah, because it's not that you are somewhere and then you have the idea, ah, I want to buy this. Yes. And then you are there without a bag, <laughs> without <laughs> something to wrap. Yeah. So, so it's all about organization. You, you must organize yourself more. I think this is a good point um, from you. This is what you also see in this uh, crisis right now. Maybe it's not just that bad to have a little bit more of rice and spaghetti and everything else at home because it was so long sold out. And if you just come twice a week and yeah, grab a little bit more, uh, you can just live with them a little bit longer and you don't have to go a grocery shopping like every two or three days. Um, what one, one of my friends is doing, she's like, going grocery shopping like two every two days and yeah this costs a little bit more time like this so I think this is a really good point to just stop by at those shops for like twice a week or like um no, no every every second week or even once a month yeah 
Yeah, the, the thing is, um, I mean, I don't, I don't mind carrying my own bag because even if even for cereal rice or stuff like this, there are some tissue bags which are actually not that. Uh, it's not a big deal to have them in a bag. It's not heavy. It's not taking place. Then when it's full, then it takes place. But like as usual in the normal supermarket, it's just that the opportunity here in Berlin are not that uh, widespread. Let's say. I mean, I'm living in Tripto in Berlin, and there is no un unverpackt uh, supermarket. So I have to go to Kreuzberg with my bike, and then I can't carry like 10 kilo things. So I don't know. I think normal. We also need to put pressure on normal supermarket to offer alternative to for zero waste consumption and yeah yeah this is why we need time i would say but as i read this in the in the chat somebody wrote it's also where we choose to put our time so i mean we can see now for corona people and we are accepting really drastical change and changes in our lives. We are um, prohibiting us to do some stuff because it's saving lives and it's better for every one of us. I mean, for waste and um, stop generating waste is also the same question afterwards. I mean, it's also a story of in which world we want to live in. And if we are able to make such a big change for Corona, we also can, can can take also the good habits concerning waste and say, okay, from now on, I don't want to consume that much waste. And also, okay, it's gonna take me some effort to go to this place. I mean, in the in the in a reasonable way. I mean, I'm not carrying 10 kilo rice with my bike every every I don't know when. But I mean, if I can do this uh, instead of just going to the normal supermarket and having such plastic waste, then let's do this. I mean, it's also like a, a mindset, I would say. And I was, I just wanted to make the parallel with the corona that we are making us some so drastic change uh, for good. Actually, we, we can do this. And it's not that, I mean, it's painful for a certain liberty now. But if we are changing our habits regarding waste, it's not painful. It's just making us feel better and better for everyone. So that was my point. Yeah, I would uh, thank you so much for that. Um, I would also like to add um, uh, what I mentioned before. This whole thing is a journey, and um, for me, it is, uh, was also a process, uh, step by step. So um, first, I didn't know how to get some nuts, and I ch still bought them in packages, and I didn't know to make my uh, own uh, cleaning um, uh, cleaning stuff. So. Um, I had to learn this step by step. So, um, and actually, it's really amazing um, to understand. Oh, suddenly, um, wow! I don't need all this plastic uh, stuff. I can make it with uh, some few um, uh, intri uh, ingredients uh, by myself, and it's even cheaper that way. Um, so, this was like also an eye opener um, sometimes for me in the process. Um, but I think it is really important to understand that we live in a society that makes it really, really hard to live that way. Um, so it's not about going 100% or going zero. Yeah. Um, so, but it's more about the mindset to think about it and um, to um, um, to think about uh, okay, can I maybe reduce this one? Okay, can I maybe avoid this one? Um, and then to find a way and to think a little bit different, maybe out of the box. Um, yeah, but uh, maybe you have still some ideas. What kind of waste occur occurs in the kitchen? And maybe Pretschmek um, just raised his hand. Pretschmek, Puja. I'm sorry. It's Pschemek, it's complicated, Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we have a lot of waste, as you say, uh, plastic packaging. And uh, one of the ways we, um, we just started um, 
uh, to uh, avoid it is uh, and this is well what you say that in our society is very difficult to um, to live this kind of zero waste uh, life but i think this is as well a nice thing to to bring for example your neighbors into into working for zero waste the, in berlin in many cities in uh, apartment buildings there is this um, there are those uh, yards inside and these yards are uh, usually just grass maybe some tree or something but it's not uh, uh, very well uh, dispo I mean uh, used so we decided now to ask the owner of the house and we started planting there some vegetables some uh, herbs yeah. we did the compost bin so all our uh, waste from the kitchen goes to the compost bin and we're working on making uh, an advertisement to like hang on the on the compost bin to encourage all the neighbors uh, if they want to participate that they can bring their waste. Uh, first, I, we will write a letter. Uh, it's okay. First, we write write a letter in the building to let them know, and second, we just hang on the compost bin what can go in there and what should not go there. And maybe as well by that, if they start participating on that and with the plants that we have planted, like some tomatoes, some herbs that everybody can use, maybe they will as well feel more encouraged to do it themselves. And as they do it themselves and they see how good it tastes, that I don't know, that, that would be, yeah. Of, co of course, the Producing community garden is not our idea. We, uh, we can recommend the book uh, from Michael Mobs which is an Australian um, activist and an environmental lawyer. And he uh, wrote two books, one about sustainable house, which we haven't read, and one about sustainable food. Uh, yes, and uh, in this book, he explains a lot which, uh, which plants go well together. How can you inspire the neighbors? To he put uh, like 15 buildings i think all together in one region of sydney australia where he comes from chippendale and it's like a dream come true i think what this man has managed there like how he inspired all of these people to work together and yeah we were inspired by that it's really like a dream come true we uh, the name is here i don't know if you can see if anyone's interested yeah, yeah. so definitely bringing in the community uh, we uh, start talking to the neighbors we try to uh, get with the uh, get with the idea yeah, yeah. so um, let's say in, in anybody or if, if you are, are just behaving like that let's say like bringing your own let's say boxes when you go in a normal supermarket and they let let them put the food in yeah and you take that with you at the moment it's not working because of corona yeah so everybody is refusing it yeah but our experience is that we are doing that constantly in the supermarket yeah and what we see is positive let's say on the one hand we are educating the people that are selling the stuff because we are always asking please put that in our own bag in our own bottle whatever yeah so let's say the more you do that the more they they are used to serve you in that way yeah and in let's say in, in, in when you do that yeah. other people see that and are encouraged to do so additionally too yeah and, and 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 we see that really in the normal supermarket yeah and this is let's say bringing the idea more broader um yes uh, okay uh here in i live near augsburg and um there is an initiative which is called Plastic Free Augsburg. So they organize regular meetings and 
um, give information about how you can live without plastic and they also have um, a sticker and it's called bring your own and you can offer them these stickers to the shops where you might think they they um, put it on their uh, windows so that everyone can see you there is a shop you can bring your own boxes and they will handle it plastic free and that's also a nice um, idea to spread this plastic free ideas furthermore yeah, I want uh, just want to add uh, to this. Um, there is also uh, such a label in, in Munich. It's called Einmal ohne Bitte. And uh, we and uh, different groups from other cities, also from Hamburg, from uh, Cologne, and uh, um, maybe some other cities, uh, uh, we are all working together. Um, so we want to also bring the label Einmal ohne Bitte uh, to Berlin, uh, which also works in, in the same way. So if a shop uh, offers mm -hmm for example, for the cheese uh, store that you can bring your own stuff, they can have this label and it's communicated as well as in the, uh, in the shop as well as uh, on the website. So it will be also um, a little bit like um, propaganda for bringing your own stuff <laughs> and will also make it more mainstream. So uh, this will come and it was planned to uh, launch it already but now in the corona times we have delayed it because we think that people are maybe not so responsive to this right now but it will come uh, as soon as possible to berlin also and it's very uh, successful also in, in munich there are over 300 shops already uh, using this label yeah thanks I think a main thing uh, in the kitchen is, of course, organization. Uh, that way that you, uh, that you know exactly what you will consume, what you, what you uh, must consume for, uh, yeah, for avoiding to uh, drop things away because they are um, over, over the time, over 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 to you yeah uh, what what we have done is let's say in uh, in the in, in, in the uh, in the refrigerator let's say we are not uh, wrapping in uh, vegetables in plastic we are uh, we are using uh, fabric yeah so we 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 use uh we wrap it in in fabric that we make a little bit uh wet wet with water yeah and this is doing exactly the same as wrapping in plastic so you avoid let's say using all that cellophane stuff or so to keep vegetables longer fresh in the in the fridge this is a really good idea, and um, you can also wrap some bread um, to refrigerate it in the fridge um, only in fabric. This is way more easy to just um, than to put it in a box or something else. All right, I would uh, just ask, uh, just add a little bit uh, about food uh, and food waste. There's also a food sharing. There's um, also uh, this um, shop where you can buy uh, overdue uh, foods like um, what are they called? Um, surplus. Surplus. Surplus, right? Um, so this will produce some waste, but this is already waste. So you are at least uh, um, saving the food. So maybe as we are progressing the time, we can also have a look uh, um, uh, into the bathroom a little bit. Um, Ingo, quick suggestion yeah. right now, uh, because you will save this on your computer. Maybe people can take a screenshot if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so we have it. I mean, if whoever wants, I will do it. Um, just before you close it, you can yeah. give it out. I will make it a screenshot.
No, I can't because it's... No, no, um, actually you can save it, but um, I can make a take a screenshot if you're done. You're uh, done I, now. I have already? saved it, yeah. Okay. Have okay, I? I've taken one. Okay, can I clear it now? Maybe. Um, I think everybody's got a screenshot, maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think so, yes. All right, let's move on to the next uh, area in, in the household, uh, bathroom. Uh, maybe we can make it a little bit shorter now, so we can have a little bit uh, Q&A uh, um, at the end. So what kind of waste uh, do you find in the bathroom? Any ideas? Mainly packaging of products. That's, yeah, yeah container. No, 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 no. for, for example, um, what I do to avoid plastic in the bathroom is to produce my own deal using coconut oil and natron baking soda. Is it the, the English word? I'm not sure. Um, and uh, yes, I, I, I said it before to use uh, soaps for cleaning my skin and my hair and oil for the body. Yeah, so initially we, we, we wanted, uh, we, we switched to, to, to hair soap for washing the hairs, but we were not really comfortable with it because the hair did, did feel so, yeah, some special feeling, yeah, so it's, it's like, yeah, not really good, yeah, and that's because of the ingredients of a normal soap, let's say they react with the chalk in the water, and then you have that problem, yeah. And but you, what you can do is there is a, there are shampoo bars, so uh, shampoo which looks like a soap, yeah. And uh, there the tenside in it don't react with the chalk in the water, and there you have exactly the same feeling, and and you can use it like uh, like a normal soap uh, uh, shampoo, yeah. And uh, and it's it's really there. There is no packing packaging, yeah. And it's it, it's it's really good. And I use it now. I think since four years, four years or so. Yes, and I'm super satisfied with it. And let's say for the for the for the toothpaste, we switched. Let's say we we, we did some 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 tests. So let's say we said toothpaste pills, but I don't like it. I like it. She likes it. So, so, but what, 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 what we, we have done is we switched, let's say from normal toothpaste to Iona, which is some kind of concentrated toothpaste, which is also in, let's say, uh, in, a, in a metallic tube. Yeah? So let's say it's not plastic, it's, it's metal, so you can be better recycled. And because it's concentrated, you really use only very little. Yeah. Like a lentil. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you need less, less than a lentil uh, of, 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 of toothpaste. Uh, yeah. So it's Iona. So it's, it's a brand, yeah. And it's a concentrate, and so because it's all smaller and it's packed not in plastic, it's let's say my favorite. Hmm? Any more ideas? I I have a, a tip oh, for yeah. uh, for users of uh, soap for the hair because of the feeling you uh, you mentioned. Um, you can make a <laughs> uh, uh, like a conditioner with water and uh, vinegar after uh, shampooing the hair or, or uh, clean it with cold water. And uh, 
cleaning the tooth. I I try to, to clean them with tooth oil, but I don't like it, and I don't like the pills. Perhaps it's, it's a way for me to try Iona. It's a great idea. Thank you. I want to talk about something uh, which we have not... Uh, I don't know how many of you share the same experience with me. I have a cat in the house, and the uh, only source of organic waste that gets created by the lady in the house is... Uh, and because we keep her litter box in the washroom. And one practice that I have started doing, I don't know whether it's, it's uh, the right practice that I'm doing. I mean, since we were talking about it, so uh, I realized whether it, I, mean, I thought it's a good platform. So usually what I do is whenever I have like a big bag, like for example, if there's an empty uh, uh, like cat food, which is usually like a 10 kg bag. So what I do, I usually take the litter, keep it in it and then air seal it so that I can reuse it like four or five times because I cannot put, the litter, her litter uh, in the organic waste because it stinks really bad. So I, in a way, I usually use it for like three, four times. And then when it's airtight, I mean, of course it won't stink. And uh, yeah, that way, I mean, I, I try to elongate the, the waste creation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to say, that you can keep on reusing it. Okay, seems like everyone is speechless. Am I doing it right? First of all, uh, the question. No, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, animal food packaging, yeah? Uh, you can reuse it and uh, you can um, package it like um, airtight. Yeah, so uh, the idea is, I mean, uh, I don't know how many of you have cats, but then their poop and their peel really stinks. And um, one thing, I mean, this is one of the things that I used to do because every time I take her litter and put it in the, uh, where we put our organic waste in the, in the kitchen usually. So every time I open the dustbin, it stinks really bad. It's an excruciating smell. So uh, what I started using is because with the cat food, uh, I mean, that is one thing that comes along with either cat food package or like a tissue, uh, whenever we get like a tissue bag, like when uh, we have like a packet of 10 tissue box, then, uh, then it's, it's like a big packet. So I usually put it in, seal it in a way that, you know, the stench doesn't come out. And it is of a very heavy material, like a thick material. So that way, I mean, I elongate it. I don't, every time I, I have to clean her uh, litter box, like every three days, um, so that it doesn't stink. And then I use that, that helps me in uh, like using the same, uh, like a new polythene pack for like every time I use it. So I can use it like three, four times. Usually, I mean, if it's like a 10 kg bag, then it really helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything more in the bathroom? What about cleaning stuff? I'm trying right now because I raised my hand since a while, but <laughs> it doesn't function in fact. Um, I would come back uh, quite quick to the point of the uh, toothpaste pills because I was using them and the dentist was very, um, um, he was telling me it's great what you're using, you're very well uh, brushing your teeth, what wasn't the case, but it seems to be that they're working that work quite well. But they are not so, they are quite expensive in my eyes. And so I um, began to do my own um, toothpaste um, with a research from Smarticula, I think. I think somebody has written it in the chat before. And concerning cream and um, shampoo, I completely stopped to use it because I realized that my um, hairs and my um, skin gets too used to it so it becomes depending on it and right now I use only water and I can have, don't have to wash my hair for two weeks before it was for three or four days I have to wash it again and right now the hair got so habitued to it that it's okay with only with water so I have nothing else material to wash it's great try it thanks Um, there was another hand rising. Um, 
I'm sorry, present Meg. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> better. You're getting better. <laughs> uh, we. Um, I wanted to tell to talk about a couple stuff in the bathroom. For example, I um, used to use a hair gel, and what um, what is a very good shampoo and works a bit like a gel is flax seeds. So you lime so lime salmon, flax seeds. And it's, it works like that, that you have to boil them. And then there's kind of a gel coming out. And this gel is um, after you um, you rinse it and you kind of, uh, how do you say Filter it? Filter it. Filter it. Strain it. Yeah. Thick. Strain. Yeah, yeah, strain it with, with cloth and, and pre press yeah. it through. But it's very good as a, as a shampoo or, and hair gel. And what I wanted to say, we as well, uh, since a couple of days, always wi while um, washing the dishes in the kitchen, we put a bowl in, inside the sink and we collect the water. And then we uh, put the bowl, water from the bowl to the bucket, big bucket. And a couple hours after washing the dishes, uh, there is enough water in the bucket, we can use it uh, to flush the toilet, for example. Or to water the trees outside. Or to water the trees, rain. but actually with the dishwasher soap, it's better just to flush the toilet. Yeah. So this is in the bathroom, another idea how you can reduce the water waste. And of course, uh, I'm doing um, since, um, since not so long, but as well, I'm trying to do the Wim Hof method, which is a <laughs> cold shower method. Uh, which is another uh, maybe way to to reduce uh, hot water waste okay. and and you I can guarantee you if you take a cold shower you definitely uh, take it shorter <laughs> you don't use so much water yeah I wanted to add about the shampoo thing that I read as well about uh, doing shampoo with rice um, flour so rogan milk uh, it's just made like a paste where you just boil the water and mix it, let it cool, and then it, it worked out pretty well uh, on my hair, but only for some time. Uh, somebody just said about just washing with water. I was trying these days because I didn't have to go to work and I wasn't sure like it was gonna look so good otherwise. And definitely I, I trusted myself, okay, these days I don't have to go to work, so uh, nobody's gonna see my hair is like really greasy or something. It was not looking so great. I did it for some weeks. And in the end, I could extend the times where I was washing my hair, but uh, yeah, I still had to, I, I went back to, to using a bit of shampoo, but of course I don't buy shampoo anymore in bottles, uh, plastic, uh, yeah, in plastic bottles. What I discovered was in the drogerie marked so in the M, they sell from their own brand, I think it's Alverde or Alnatura, I don't remember. Okay. Alverde, and they sell uh, shampoo bars which last for a long time and it's like uh, wrapped it's not even wrapped in plastic it's just in a little uh, box made of uh, paper um, this was just as a, an extra idea for yeah for people ah and the last question from Ingo was as well about the cleaning um, in the bathroom I I started using uh, vinegar a lot and uh, natron like uh, what was bicarbonate soda. The combination of these two is amazing. Uh, like uh, you just rub a bit, it, it takes away all of the dirt in the bathtub, for example. The the baking soda is a bit uh, it scratches a bit the surface. So just with a sponge, sometimes even while I'm showering, I'll just add. The, a uh, bit of uh, soda on the floor and I'll rub it just with my feet while I'm like using the water to shampoo my hair or something and it comes off very very easy I mean if you don't want to do what you're showering I understand uh, but just like using spraying a bit of vinegar and a bit of natron and you can let it sit after your shower you can go and and it's fine otherwise you can come back and rub it a bit with a sponge it comes off very very easy yeah these two are great yeah All right, right. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, um, include all the stuff from the chat also in, into the um, whiteboard because it was too much screens now for me. 
um, but you have uh, you have it all uh, also over there. So uh, I don't know, Michael, what do you think? Um, are we coming to an end already? Yeah. Uh, yeah well, I believe like fifteen more minutes, have, right? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have like something like fifteen minutes or so for more questions. Um, if there's any questions around the topic of zero waste, I mean, we already collected so much uh, inspiration, which is great. Um, I don't know if there's like any general questions, anything else for zero waste, Ingo and, um, and Isabel, for zero waste, EV, or... Yeah, maybe I can just say that um, I like very much um, that you mentioned uh, to organize and put pressure to uh, onto the supermarkets, and um, for uh, generally uh, for um, um, so, so change in society because today we are we are talking about what we can do in our daily lives, but also it is of course uh, important. Um, that we uh, join and uh, also make a change on a higher level, on a society level. Um, so um, I would really um, uh, use this uh, moment to invite you also uh, to um, possibly join um, the Waste EV, uh, or, um, join Ocean Now uh, to support their campaigns. And uh, also if you live in another city, not in Berlin, there are many groups uh, all over um, Germany, also all over Europe and all over the world, where you can join and um, find um, like-minded people to exchange, but also to organize and um, do some stuff on the local level or also on the national or international level um, to strengthen this idea and to make really a change. And I would just like to put some links into the chat where you can also find some further uh, information, but also about the Waste EV, you can find our newsletter and website and social media also uh, where you can follow. And you are uh, invited uh, also to join and uh, to organize this all together. But um, yeah, we ha still have some more minutes, and I would like to open it for general questions for any, any debate. Um, what do you have on your mind? Can I ask one question? Uh, Ingo, do you still have the last slide so I can take a screenshot? I don't know if other people like taking screenshots, but I just thought it would be nice, um, a nice way to just take a picture uh, at my end. Um, I don't know if you saved it or you, you still can open it, this, this screen share. The whiteboard? Mm, if you still have it. If you don't, no worries. Um, okay, cool. Nice, thank you. Thanks a lot. And yes, yeah, so there was a, a question, I think from Petra, you raised your hand earlier, right? Yes. <clears throat> so I would like to ask Ingo and Maike, what do you think of the cradle to cradle concept? Do you know it? Mm, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, the cradle to cradle uh, concept is actually very similar to the CRS idea. There are several uh, um, quite similar um, ideas of the circular economy, uh, it's very close in, in many regards. Um, but um, Cradle to Cradle is very close to us and uh, we actually haven't worked together with the Cradle to Cradle um, organization yet, but we are, uh, we know from each other and we are like friends. So um, yeah, I would support this idea. It's great okay. what they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally, definitely. I, um, I also was, yeah, I, uh, I didn't, I don't know too many details of it, to be very honest. I just came across this at the, this um, amazing event called um, Entrepreneurship Summit that happens in Berlin every year in October. You might know it also. It's also from Professor Faltin, who actually also invented kind of the cradle to cradle uh, uh, idea. And um, yeah, so I, I absolutely uh, like the approach totally, yes, yeah. 
Mm, did you have something? Did you have something specific in mind? Do you, do you would you like to share something? You a tip? I just I just wanted to mention it because I think this is also a great um, opportunity to to reduce waste and to reuse all the materials, uh, even with buildings and things like that. So I just wanted to bring in the idea and what you think of of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, any more questions? Anything, anything you have in mind? I will also just add in the chat while we are. Uh, oh yeah, there was another question by Britta. Just uh, quickly, I put the uh, petition in the chat to everyone. If you like, you can sign our petition. Um, which has been around for a while um, to avoid microplastics in cosmetics. Um, and we extended this petition also with, um, with uh, brands now from like business brands, um, not all of them zero waste, unfortunately, but uh, at least working without microplastics. So in a way, also zero waste, avoiding microplastics in the products, at least a start, yes. Um, so Britta, yes, you had a question. No, it's, it's not a question, but I, I, um, it, it came in my mind that there is in Berlin, uh, there are two, uh, two stores that save um, food and, uh, and rebuy it. Um, one is in Steglitz, I think, it's, 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 the name is still Plus, and the other one is the Retterladen. That's all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. I had one question to Isabel and Ingo about zero waste uh, FL. Do you um, also help or um, how do you say, or do consulting for um, enterprise to reduce also their waste in their everyday lives and also in the way they are producing their product or service because even if they are IT society or IT companies, they we know that IT is also producing waste. Like producing one laptop is making I don't know much waste. So, um, are you having also this kind of activity? Uh, yeah. Uh, so we um, developed um, a program for uh, companies. So um, they can join the program and have uh, like uh, have also workshops uh, where they can uh, evaluate what kind of waste do they produce uh, in the company and also to try to find ways to avoid uh, uh, or reduce it. Um, and um, this is in the um, early beginning phase. We had uh, like one uh, prototype uh, workshop already, and uh, the company was uh, also quite pleased. So um, we are working towards slowly uh, expanding this and um, also maybe um, advertise this to other companies okay. in the future. If you're interested, you can really, you can join and uh, work with us together. Okay. Yeah, because for me, it's also like a really important topic because uh, zero waste, if individuals are making zero waste is great and it's also a must, but I mean, one human is producing x kilo of waste but the main part is not at home i would say everything what we are consuming uh, has generated or everything we have at home has generated waste and we are not bringing it to the to the mill tonne so um, there is the ways we can avoid making zero waste personally at home or in our ever, everyday lives but a huge part is generating from the company we were buying the stuff from and so that's why I find uh, this topic really interesting and I find great what you are doing then also with company. Yeah. Yeah, but also I think um, this has to be done not only on the uh, level of the companies, uh, but uh, also on the political level. So the politics have to make, um, uh, have to set the rules what the companies have to do and what, what they can not do and um, we are also working in this direction but yeah we are still like um, um, building up our 
energy or, or power. Um, maybe we can, uh, before we go, Michael, have you, uh, have you had to uh, take a screenshot from all our, our crew? Oh yeah, we're recording this, so yes. Are you recording? Okay, fine. Yeah. So we don't need yeah. That. Fine. Thanks. Yeah. The crew is on. Uh, <laughs> crew is a nice term for this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're we're recording this for sure. Um. Yeah. So and also. Uh. Yeah. So we have a couple of more minutes. Maybe we have one more question. Uh. If there is are any questions around, I mean we had like lots of. I took notes of so many good things, so it's really inspiring. And it really, like, I can already see that it, it just does make a difference to uh, talk about it uh, and also to talk in a group. And it's just so much more present, also the little things that you haven't considered before. Um, so it really is a good, it's really good to have this, actually you can have this regularly. That's why you're there. So you have your, your meetings. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Corinna, uh, she, do you have a question, Corinna? Um, there was like a food sharing question of, oh, I think this was not a question. This was just uh, saying food I'm just sharing. highly recommending it. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> cool. Yes. This is something, it's not a, not a question that I want to put up since uh, I believe no one has a question. Uh, just one of the practices that I also do is whenever I have a, a milk carton, uh, because that is one thing that re gets really, uh, that we use quite often. Um, I don't consume uh, uh, cow's milk. I, I usually take uh, soy milk. And so usually what I do is like once it's empty, I crush it in a way and then fold it so that it occupies less space in my garbage can. Uh, and that way is I'm able to, again, not, I mean, it's just empty space, right? So, I mean, I fold it in the smallest of the, uh, uh, way possible and then dump it. So, yeah, that's one more thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Um, yeah, so this was a, this is a really, really amazing workshop. Thank you so much. I think we could, yeah, slowly come to an end uh, and they great. All of, to all of you, a big, big thank you for your contributions. It really, you can see in a room where people exchange ideas, you could just, everyone can benefit from it so quickly. And thank you so much to Isabel and Ingo uh, for sharing their, their knowledge here. It's very, very, uh, yeah, it's super helpful. Just really great. Um, so I would like to just drop one note here that, um, Yes, yeah, so we are um, right now on, on our program, uh, the, uh, the Inseparable program, which is in its final phase now. Uh, we've got one week left and we have a couple of events. Just like to drop the link here. You're warmly invited um, in particular to one event that is going to happen in two and a half hours. <laughs> so we've got today, we've got two events. The one in two and a half hours is the fishbowl discussion. And um, it kind of goes along also with, uh, is it, the topic of the 2030 agenda, so the sustainable development goals and where we actually stand today as a society. And uh, yeah, so it, it goes along with zero waste also in a way, but of course it's more on a meta level. So we will discuss, it's going to be very interactive. Um, there will be uh, Rebecca Freitag, uh, the, the former UN youth delegate um, uh, for yeah, in Germany, uh, Clara Meyer from Fridays for Future, Gregor Hagedorn from Scientists for Future. Um, then we have uh, Klaus Mindrup from SPD, um, and we have a moderator, from Z Nils Simon from Adelphi. It's going to get political and it's going to be very interactive, and I'm very much looking forward to this. So you're very welcome to join if you have time today at six. Um, yes, so with this said, um, yeah, again, I just send out a virtual big thank you again to Ingo and Isabel. Thanks for your time and for sharing everything. And thank you so much everyone for joining. This was really fun. Yeah, thanks everybody for participating and thank you, Michael. It was great fun. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.